Sure. Mm -hmm. Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Tuesday Night in the Prague Seat. We've got the original quartet together. George Lemmy, Sir Chuck Alvarez, Anthony Ferraro, I am Pete Pardo. Today, we've got a very special show for you. We're, uh, you know, we love talking about live albums on this channel. It seems we can never get away from talking about live albums for too long before we come right back to it once again. So since we only really talk about progressive rock, progressive metal, and jazz fusion on this show, we're going to do our favorite live albums for those three little genres, right? So I've asked everybody to uh, go into their collections, into their memory banks, and pull out and discuss your 10 favorite live albums for these little genres of music that we love so much that we talk about nonstop on this channel. So, uh, and we've, we've given a couple rules here. Um, these have to be pretty much official releases. So mm -hmm. with, in other words, and what makes it official? Does that mean it's got at least a stamp of approval from the band or label? Probably. So we're not really doing bootlegs uh, and maybe Anthony, you want to talk a little bit about kind of what we how we decide to do this here? Because well, we decided to do either like uh, full length live releases or archival releases released by the band, aka something by King Crimson or the Grateful Dead would kind of do, or what Jethro Tull has been doing with the box sets. They've been uh, uh, adding a show from the tour that they released the box set for. Yeah, so these could be recordings from 30, 40 years ago, but they're now making them available publicly. And uh, in some instances, and I'm sure it'll happen today, uh, some of those particular albums in question might even be better than the, the official live albums that they released originally back mm -hmm. in the day. So uh, let's see. So we're going to have, we're going to go George, Chuck, Anthony, and myself and go round and round and round we go. So <laughs> George, kick us off with your, I guess, number 10. All right. From the, these guys are the godfathers of Japanese fusion. They are called Prism. 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 Oh no, I've heard of Prism before. Yeah. Matter of fact, did they play at um, Nearfest? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I know Kenso played at Nearfest. Yes, that I know. Mm -hmm. Great band too. Oh, oh, man. man, all right. I hate to do it all of a sudden, but I just realized now I didn't pick that damn live Kenso album. <laughs> <laughs> George, you're, you're so good at like mentioning other bands when you're showing your main band that you're talking about. I'm like, oh, anyway, I, I, I digress. So, Prism. <laughs> These guys have 31 albums. Maybe the longest running fusion band in existence. They've been around since 77. No hiatuses. Constantly putting out stuff. If wow. there's someone that's been around more than that, I don't know. But uh, this is a archival release, came out in 2004, but obviously it's called 1977 Live at Sugino Koto, so recorded in 77. Um, at this point, they only had two albums, so they do the, the majority of that material and three covers, Fred by Lifetime, mm -hmm. Midnight Techno by Demiola, and uh, George Duke Tune. Which I can't read. That's what she said. Um, incredible production, especially for the era. I, it's, I can't really get, o get over how good the sound is on this one. And great set list. And it, if you can find it, I recommend it. So it, could you talk a little bit about the lineup? Like, uh, like what kind of, uh, what, you know, what do we got there? Is that uh, guitar, bass, uh, drums, guitar, bass, guitar, bass, drums, keys, and sax. Cool. All right. I need I, I need to listen to that band, I think, because yeah, I, I don't yeah. think I've ever heard them. I've heard of them. Yeah. I've heard of them as well. Great band, actually. <clears throat> Their uh, records are inconsistent, but um, this is consistent record. Very good. Well, with 31 albums, uh, you would think that there's going to be a little bit of drop off here and there, but I'm yeah. going to have to pick that one up. So that's very cool. Wow, we're starting <laughs> off with a bang. Chuck, what do you got? <laughs> um, my number 10 is uh, Magma's Live. Uh, what's that? Um, this one of these uh, Christian Vander, um, the Zool bands, crazy band. Um, what's uh, the the lead off track contact? Um, yeah, um, contact. Yeah, it was it's just amazing. Thirty plus minutes of just plain madness, man. This band, Magma, Magma Live, once again, is just <laughs> just one of those albums that you just got to hear, man. 
I wonder if they played Contark at um when they were at um near fest that time. I don't remember. <clears throat> I don't that remember. I, I walked out halfway through their set. <laughs> Just too bad. So here all the comments are gonna be going. We know Pete hates magma. It's like I, I, I got I mean, I got I'll be honest. I have tried for like 30 mm -hmm. years to get into Magma. I went and bought every damn album on CD. I, I tried and tried and tried. I just cannot get into the vocals of that band. I, oh. Musically, they're amazing. Mm -hmm. They are. Oh, that is that that out live album is probably the only one that I really kind of enjoyed out of all okay. of the albums I bought by them. I could see that. Yeah. I just man, I just that whole Cobayan language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like everybody has that band that everybody mm -hmm. else seems to like, and you just don't get. Mm -hmm. Boom! Yeah. It's magma. <laughs> I tried. I'm trying. What are you gonna do? A cool pick. No, so that, that's good. All right, we're getting off to Anthony. What do you got? Uh, my number 10 is a uh archival release from the Zappa Family Trust. Uh, we're gonna do, of course, an, an Eddie Jobson uh picture here. Um, Zappa live in Philly 1976. Mm -hmm. Uh, the lineup is Terry Bozio on drums, Patrick O'Hearn on bass, uh, Frank on guitar. Eddie on keyboards, Bianca backing vocals, and uh, and Ray White on guitar and vocals. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from the Zootalors tour. Uh, it was released from the Zappa Family Trust in 2009. Uh, tracks taken from, you know, he's got a huge catalog, but uh, only two tracks taken from the Zootalors tour or the Zootalors album. Uh, uh, wind up working at a gas station, and uh, the torture never stops. Uh, the highlight for me, though, is, of course, you know, Jobson's on this tour. I would love to see footage of it. I don't – it's got to be in the vault somewhere. I don't mm -hmm. know. But uh, what, what, Jobson's, what Jobson's violin on black napkins is just jaw-dropping. I know people are surprised that I'm saying something like that. But <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal archive release. I can't believe it was released in 2009 or I've had it that long. But this is my number 10, Zappa Live in Philly how, around Halloween time, 1976. You can't go wrong with anything from that period, to be honest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So are we placing bets on how many times uh, EJ is going to come up in the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number 10, uh, Kansas, two for the show. Man, oh, brilliant. Great live mm -hmm. album. And when they remastered this and reissued it with the, with the extra tracks, uh, just made it sound even greater. Oh, man, this is such a great sounding live album. And it's just, it's this band at the absolute peak of their powers. You know, unfortunately, this was kind of like the end of their big, big run, right? Because then they mm -hmm. released Monolith after this, which did pretty well, but not as good as the albums before, and then Audio Vision, so on and so forth. But man, you, everything is on here. I mean, all their really great tracks are on this album. You know, Song for America, Point of Return, Paradox, Icarus, uh, Portrait, Carry On Wayward Cern, Journey from Mario Braun. I mean, it's all here, Mysteries of Mayhem, you know, The Wall, Magnum Opus. Oh, it's just such a great great live album and then you got like i said the bonus disc with all the extra cool stuff the spider closet chronicles and hopelessly human child of innocence ah just mandatory mandatory live album from one of my favorite bands of all time so excellent at the height of the powers pete mr walshy <laughs> oh. i don't think there was anybody better oh i you voice, know what? Mm -hmm. i wouldn't argue that at all there's there was a couple of guys around this time period who were just i mean he was one lou graham steve perry those three guys were like just Freddie Mercury, Brad Delph, you mm -hmm. know, that late seventies era who were just like untouchable. Uh, yeah. Walsh is amazing. Mariah and and, and journey for Mariah Braun is, is like a, is a prog, just classic. Oh, absolutely. That whole album, man. Mm -hmm. Now, when I saw them the first time I saw them, in, I saw them three times with, with Walsh. And the first time in 94, they, they did like a little interlude of uh journey for Mariah Braun. I'm like, Oh, talk about it. Like just that keyboard riff is just so beautiful. <laughs> And unfortunately, by 94, he's yeah. already slipping. Yeah. Frankie. So mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George, back to you for number nine. <clears throat> All right. Uh, one thing we all like about live albums is a really good chosen set list and good sound. Yep. Something I like, in addition to that, is value. Like. Don't give me poorly produced versions of stuff that I already bought. Give me a little something that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Something does that. Oh, oh. Fleck and the Fleck Tone. Love that album. I, that, that, 
I should have picked that as well. I love that album. Mm -hmm. Out of the 20 songs, only eight of them have appeared at this point. So you got 12 new songs, basically. Either brand new or appearing on other albums outside of the band. It has the other stuff, too. The sound is incredible. Performances are top notch. And you even got a couple of guest stars. Chick Corea is on one song and Brandon mm -hmm. Salas is on one song. So if you're looking for an entry point for the Flectones, this is a good one. That's a good, excellent album. And when you think about it, how ballsy is it to release a live album with more than half of the set unreleased material that mm -hmm. never hear on the studio album? Bands will ne would never do that today. Oh, you know? It's very ballsy, like you said. Mm -hmm. And wait, George, what year was that released? 96. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's that's very talented man very mm -hmm. talented man. cool choice all right chuck back to you all right my number nine is uh miles davis's uh, live evil oh yeah oh man this is another album that's just plain brutal you know it's like listening to pre mahavishnu orchestra yeah, especially being that john mclaughlin is on quite a few of the songs there oh man you know steve grossman um uh, Jack Dejeuner, you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dave Holland and Michael Henderson at a the time, they were just, I think they were, Michael Henderson was just coming into the band at that time. So hard, funky stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that also Billy Cobham played on here too. I think both of them. He might have, because a lot of those live albums have like recordings from multiple shows and things. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm trying to remember, I don't know off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. that's great miles. so oh, many man. great miles live albums oh, well, from that from that period oh. you know. <laughs> good choice good choice all right anthony all right. Back to you. uh my number nine uh is um my, my my number nine is uh brand x but wait there's more uh from 2017 uh it was taken from uh a show in cellular pa that summer i think it was in june uh, the production is fantastic. Uh, some of the songs, are, like uh, Nightmare Patrol, was only ever on the live album they released in the 70s. And I think mm -hmm. this version kicks it. It's just not even close. It's so good. Uh, you, get, you get 12 songs. You get two CDs, six tracks apiece. You know, you got Born Ugly, uh, Nuclear Burn. Uh, and then they, they ended with uh, Malaga Virgin on uh, CD2. I, I, fantastic recording uh the packaging could be a little bit better and unfortunately right now since they're not touring the only way you can get it is a download for a cd price which i think is kind of ridiculous but i guess when they go back on tour they're going to be selling it at the merch table but this is if you're a brand x fan you got to have this this is phenomenal so this is uh but wait there's more live 2017 release very cool <clears throat> great live man Oof. excellent awesome well, I had to have some Frank Zappa on my list. Uh, the question was, was I going to go with my gut or go with my heart? I know they're kind of close to each other, but uh, mm -hmm. I decided to forego Roxy and Elsewhere for You Can't Do That on Stage oh. and Volume 2, the Helsinki concert, which is, I mean, one of the most amazing live albums mm -hmm. ever. To think they held off on this for, you know, so many years i mean this is that classic band it's it's the, the lineup that i love the most from this so frank on guitar and vocals napoleon murphy brock george duke ruth underwood tom fowler chester thompson i mean it doesn't get much better than that so many i mean Stinkfoot, inca roads redunzel dupree's paradise uh pygmy twilight i mean cheapness big swifty it's all on here mm -hmm. just an amazing amazing band you know whether you call them a fusion band or a prog band or a, a psychedelic band or just whatever. I mean, Zappa's band around this time frame and the lineup that Anthony mentioned before and the one right before this and the one right after it. I mean, you don't get much better than that as far as musicianship goes. Just absolutely incredible. And it's such a great sounding live album, right? Because some of the, you can't do that on stage anymore. The quality kind of, uh, you know, it varies on some of them, but this is just. That's my, fa that's my favorite of the, of the uh, can't do those on stage. The, the second oh, album. Yeah, mm -hmm. By far. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the whole show, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the entire show. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So that's my number nine. All right. Number eight, Redemption, Live from the Pit. 
That's a great one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Co-produced by Anthony's good friend Ken Golden. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think their best sounding album, including all their studio albums. This album sounds great. Yeah. Um, a live album. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great set list. Recorded live at Prague Power. Um, 2014 release. Not much to say about it. High energy performance, just kicking ass all the way through. I, they have a couple others, but for me, this one, for some reason, it clicks with me. So I recommend it. And Ray Alder sounds incredible on that live album. He's yeah. just such a great singer, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so great. Great choice. Great choice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chuck, back to you. All right. My number eight is um, Cannes uh, Music Live, 1971-77. Um, well, another band that what's a, that usually um, what's a flies under the radar, but this is a very influential crop rock band. A lot of funky, palm, psychedelic stuff on here. Um, things that just continue to just mog boggle my mind every time I listen to them. One of my favorite bands in can one of my favorite European bands that is. So it, what's a, my favorite once again? It's Can Live. Um, music um, live 1971 through 1977 double CD. Mm -hmm. Chuck is two for two today because uh, <laughs> Ken is the other band that I just don't get that everybody <laughs> asks me to do shows on on the channel. Uh, well, you're going you're gonna to find a couple of more in here. <laughs> oh, Anthony, back to you. Uh, my number eight, my number eight number is uh, King Crimson. Live at Milan, 2003, from the uh, Collectors Club, from uh, DGM website, which is Fripp's website. But uh, this is taken from the Power to Believe tour. Uh, just a phenomenal recording, uh, you know, with Level 5 and Dangerous Curves and Power to Believe and Elephant Talk. And, you know, I'm a big blue head, and this is just a phenomenal recording. I wish I had seen this tour. So I bought the album a couple years later and I didn't realize how great it was, but... I love the album. Had to have a recording from this. This is a great one. Uh, this is from uh, 2000, 2005, I think. So this is from the Power to Believe tour, King Crimson. And it's uh, number uh, number 39 of the uh, club series. I mean, we could do a whole separate show just on... Oh, just on that alone. Mm -hmm. There's like 52 of them, I think. Oh, man, crazy. But crazy. he did it the right way. I mean, you make money off of them. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting that the two official live albums from back in the day pale in comparison to everything they've released since? Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. So USA mm -hmm. and Earthbound, which I'd still mm -hmm. like, but I mean. Oh, but, but Earthbound, oh, that sound, it drives me crazy, especially oh, yeah. when it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the raindrops, you want to cry. <laughs> but the fact that they offer recordings from each tour is just awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a whole bunch from the, the couple recent tours. And man. I mean, and I've seen them a couple times live in the last couple of tours, but man, the live albums they've released, just amazing. Absolutely. Pete, just how about the drum solo that Gavin Harrison did when we saw him at Radio City? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that was, was kind of amazing. That was a special show. Yeah. I, I saw them at the Egg in Albany, New York, and then that, I saw the show in the city uh, that we were both at, and both of them were just amazing shows, like mind-altering shows. Really, really great. It's fantastic stuff. Too serious, though. <laughs> well, but that's yeah. that's how they do it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. <laughs> you don't go to a King Crimson show to like kind of jump around and have fun. It's, you go and you stare and you, <laughs> yeah, and you clap and then you shut up. <laughs> you know, that's what Rip likes. But um, yeah, yeah, it is a little creepy. Like to have the, the soundscape music on in the background and they tell everybody not to talk and no pictures and it's kind of oh, weird, right? It's like you're at yeah. yeah, like Steve Wilson. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but musically, it's 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 incredible. So I can't really knock it. I guess what it don't you know if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, <laughs> I had to I had to include Rush on my list, and it was just a matter of right which Rush album do I pick? I got to go back to the first one. Uh, maybe oh. not as much prog as the, mm -hmm. their follow-up ones, but there's enough of it on here. This is such a powerful live album, mm -hmm. and it's got 2112, and it's got By Tour and the Snow Dog, and that's prog enough for me. It's got the best version of Anthem you're ever going to mm -hmm. want to hear, and so much uh, other stuff. I just love it to death. Um, the first Rush album that I ever owned right there. Got it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Very powerful album. Yeah. They rocked. They rocked during that time. Oh hell yeah, yeah, it's a mm-hmm. heavy. Album. It's quite good. Yeah. All right, George. What's behind door number? What are we at? Seven. Seven. You might have this one, Pete. I might indeed. Evander Plus. Evander Plus. Plus. Mm-hmm. Spirit of Live. Spirit yes. Mm-hmm. Two thousand. Um, great set list. Great sound. Good performances. Give you a couple songs you didn't have before. There's a new instrumental and a, a keyboard intro kind of a thing. Um, not a whole lot to say about it other than that. It's very it's just a very solid live album that, for whatever reason, I connected with when it came out and still today. I find them to be an underrated band. I was because, just going to say that. Uh-huh, because they're, they're such a great band and you don't hear too many people talk about them. You know, maybe probably because they don't tour here as much and so, but they're they're yeah. damn good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I had a uh, I, I did an interview with the drummer a couple months back and mm-hmm. I kind of asked him that question. And I said, do you think it's because like every album you release is like a big, complex concept <laughs> album? And, uh, you know, maybe the more mainstreamy prog metal fans are just, just kind of going a little over their heads. And he's like, yeah, but it's what we do. Right. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think they're brilliant. They're, they're, I love them. Love them. They're a top five prog metal band. For yep. me. I love them. Mm-hmm. I saw them at Prog Power. They went over real well. Oh, like, good. Mm-hmm. How many Prog Powers did you go to? Four. Wow. I never made any of them. I wanted to go every year. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? I spent. I went to Near Fest every year, and you, that's mm-hmm. you know. And then I went to a Roz Fest too. And it's like there's only so much you can do, and and I could drive to those Prog Power. I'd have to take a plane too. I was like, you see sabotage yeah. in one of the Prog Powers. No, no. Okay. Who was the biggest profile band you saw at Prog Power? Uh, in the genre, probably Symphony X or Camelot. Okay. Somebody like that. Yeah. Evergrey. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just genre big bands. They they didn't book any big big bands. You know, they would not book Dream Theater. No, but I mean, you know, Symphony Mm -hmm. X and even Redemption is more Mm -hmm. operational. I saw them there. Yeah. yeah, but I know Sabotage played once or twice, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but I, just, I don't remember what year that was. But uh, yeah, cool. Awesome. All right, Chuck, back to you. All right. Uh, my number seven um, is probably a little bit more streamlined in comparison to what I was just picking beforehand. Uh, Caravan, live at the Fairfield Halls, 1974. Oh, that's, a yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good uh, one. Just for, for Richard, uh, um, for Richard, um, Epic, the love it. in your eyes. Oh man, the uh, what's a main lane? Um, Memory Lane and Hugh and Head Loss. Oh, yeah, this is a band that was at right at their peak, the peak peak of their power at the Fairfield Halls. I love this album. When I finally found this album, I couldn't believe that I actually was able to to locate it. Mm-hmm. Great album. Mm-hmm. Really great band. They had that that little run for about what, like four or five years. That's mm-hmm. really special. Before mm-hmm. they started getting a little poppy, right? Because mm-hmm. right after this, this is when they started becoming popular. Yeah. You know, because they tried to break into the um, the U.S. scene and didn't work out. No, gee, we've heard that story before, haven't we? Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Mr. Anthony. What do you got next? All right. My number six is going to be another archival release that was released in 2014. Mr. Steve Hillage, live at MSG, 1977. Uh, this recording was taken on uh, when he toured, uh, when he was an opener for ELO that year. Uh, Mr. Ken Golden saw the show that I that saw this release, said it was amazing. Uh, basically, it's the tour for Fish Rising and L. Uh, Hurdy Gurdy Man, Hurdy Gurdy Glissando, uh, It's All Too Much, uh, Lunar Music Suite, uh, about six tracks and a couple uh, studio tracks with Rick Wakeman's on one of them. Uh, this is a fantastic live record from Hillage. I, I have a ton of Hillage stuff, live stuff, and this is one of the better ones. So um, MSG, Steve Hillage Live, 1977. Very cool. I'd argue that his live stuff is even more exciting than his studio stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see come Thursday night how many times Ken uh, name name drops you in the show, right? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm bringing out the, uh, the, heavy, the heavy lumber here for my number seven. Great. Oh, boy. Uh, I mean, yeah, at least your cases. Set, but, mm-hmm. 
I mean, this is like the mother of all live albums, basically, right? So this is live recordings from 1973 and 74 from, in my opinion, uh, one of the greatest uh, King Crimson lineups ever. You know, Mr. Bruford, Mr. Wetton, Mr. Fripp, and uh, Mr. Cross, right? So yeah, this Mm -hmm. is stuff from all over the place and so many classic songs from those, you know, classic albums, Lark's Tongue, Starless, uh, you know, all the great that, stuff. Here. That version of 21st century of uh, Schizoid Man. Brutal. Wow. Oh, brutal. Incredible. Very. Yeah. And you got you got four discs on here. I bought this when it first came out. And same here. I knew I uh, it's funny, I haven't listened to this in a in a long time, but I knew I had to, uh, but it's one of my favorite live albums ever. ever. So this is not going back in the closet <laughs> soon. And this is gonna go in the car with me. And uh, I'm gonna be cranking that. It, it, you know, if you didn't, if you never thought that Crimson was could be really heavy live listen to this this is oh. savage king crimson mm, mm, uh, mm, mm, big and noisy and just massive just I, I, incredible I, I listened to that that set so much that um that the box set itself doesn't exist it, it, <laughs> it, I literally, it, it, it fell apart <laughs> now, all right so now so now we're talking about it. i gotta open it right for those who've never seen this so mm-hmm. this was released in 1990 geez i don't even remember six i think 95 yeah. or six 92 no oh, all right 92 i don't know well whatever it was in the 90s but uh you get this booklet which is really cool which is basically just like you know like fripp's diary man it's just mm-hmm. it's absolutely crazy with all sorts of live shots and information on a lot of the shows and the tour and stuff just absolutely fantastic four cds i think they released later on if i'm not mistaken like a non-box set truncated version of this or yes. maybe mm-hmm. it was four cds but not in this big box with the book mm-hmm. it was a double cd set a matter of fact i even got um the four guys to sign it oh mm-hmm. really wow yes mm-hmm. awesome yeah i think uh if i ever get to meet any of the guys from well there's a it's either bill or uh, i'm never going to meet david cross when is he ever going to be here but uh, mm-hmm. frip i don't know about that either so well, maybe i'll never get it. i don't mind that no big deal all right back to you george this one's got a real low profile <clears throat> yorgos pecanus group live in athens and i don't know if you can see it oh guthrie govin oh, this is the best Gus Rigovin performance. More impressive than anything on an Aristocrats album. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's a bold statement there, man. Mm-hmm. There's double disc, eight songs, seven of them are over 10 minutes. So you figure it out. I mean, okay. there's all kinds of playing on this thing. Uh, high energy fusion, one mellow song. So just miss the Martin pop off all no mellow songs, but uh, yeah, th- if you like Guthrie Govan, this is absolutely essential. And this is easily gotten. This is on Amazon. I got it from CD Baby back when it's 2019. Mm-hmm. So for something that came out that recently, you think it would have a little bit higher profile, but a Greek fusion guy, I mean, mm-hmm. have a high profile, but absolute must blasting fusion. So for everybody who's probably going to ask, uh, where I'm going to ask uh, all four of us to drop in the comments section our lists of live albums, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff here that folks are going to sure. want to look into if they haven't already heard it. So including myself, because mm-hmm. I'm going to need that because I love Guthrie going. Yeah, so do I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I will be looking for that immediately. So uh, cool. All right, Chuck, back to you. All right. Uh, I'm back to another zany, um, zany one here. Uh, Cardiacs. Um, Cardiacs Live, um, one of the zaniest bands that you could ever hear. Um, what's there? A, a mixture of like XTC mixed with like uh, power pop um, and also a bit of metal too. Um, one of the craziest bands that I've ever had uh, listened to, Cardiacs. Um, which uh, you know they they really didn't go over too well when they um, opened up for Marillion back in the early '80s. But um, they were totally different. I know Fish was very high into them and members of Radiohead loves them as well. So this is one of those other crazy um, zany ones that I picked out, Cardiacs Live. Cardiacs Live. Um, just a great band, man. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, I've heard that name for a million years. I don't think I've ever listened to them though. Uh, they, they might be too crazy for you. Yeah, uh, what's a... <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm always willing to give everything a try, so. <laughs> All right, Anthony. 
What do you got? All right, number five is another archival release. Uh, <clears throat> it's part of the Steve Hackett Defector uh, studio release in 2015. Uh, the second disc is live at the Reading Festival in 1981. Uh, it's for the Cure tour, but uh, some of the Cured songs uh, actually have a drum sound as opposed to the drum machine on the studio album. And they, I think, really shine live like uh, Overnight Sleeper. But you have Every Day, every, every day Ace of Wands, uh, Slogan, Spectral Mornings. This is just, I have a lot of Steve Hackett live recordings, and this is just another top-notch one from uh, 1981. So it's uh, disc two of the Steve Hackett Defector release that was released in uh, 2016. And you can get it real cheap on uh, Laser's Edge for seven bucks. So this is this is a steal if you want to get some good live Hackett from 81. Shameless plug number three. <laughs> <laughs> But I will second the notion on that. That is a fan. That is one of the best uh, Hackett live albums that I've heard. That That's quite good. Really good. All right. Uh, I have a feeling someone else on the panel might have this in their list, but uh, that's okay. We haven't duplicated anything yet. Uh, I'm going to go with a little weather report live in Tokyo. Yeah. That's <laughs> Had to be right. I, I, I almost picked eight thirty because mm -hmm. I like eight thirty a lot too. Uh, so I, like, mm, I think this is their best live album, and mm -hmm. this is you know the uh, the early lineup, of course, with the uh, Zawinul and Shorter and uh, Miroslav Fitus and who was on drums on this album? Eric Gravett. That's right. Yep. So this is you know arguably also one of their strongest lineups ever. You know, most people talk about the Jaco Pastorius lineup with Steve Gadd, but or, I mean with uh, Peter Erskine, but uh, this is also quite good, quite good. And this is all lengthy, extended improvisations and whatnot. This is not the easy listening, real funky weather report that came a little later. This is the very adventurous and quite, quite jazzy. Oh man, Sur Surukusu and um, uh, Surukusu and Directions. Uh, oh, unbelievable. Amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, all long tracks on here. You know, what else you got? Uh, Dr. Honoris Causes on here as well. Just, uh, just amazing stuff. Well worth finding if you can. I'm pretty sure this is still available, but I remember when I first bought, I bought this after I was already, you know, pretty firmly entrenched in the Jocko era. And then I heard this and I was like, whoa, wait a second. Mm -hmm. That's a little different. Uh, fantastic, fantastic fusion album. Excellent pick. Mm -hmm. All right. My number five. Fate's Warning, Still Life. <clears throat> yeah. Double disc. The first disc, uh, their 54-minute masterpiece, Pleasant Shade of Grey. Then they set, kick off the second disc with another 20-minute song, Ivy Gated Dreams, which is great. Uh, the set list across both discs is incredible. Great live sound to this. And uh, like we said earlier, Ray Alder sounds good on the Redemption. I think he sounds better on this. Okay. Sounds... Yeah. Well, that that is that for me is that band probably really peaking. I think. I yeah. Think. It could I mean, they sound perfect on this. Yeah. And there's a couple guys here that I don't think played on any of the records: Bernie Versailles and Jason Keyser. I don't. They can't keep a stable lineup. <laughs> well, you know, they have the, they've had an issue with like lead guitar players, and, and you know, Jim does most of the guitar work on a lot of the studio albums. I mean, Bernie did a bunch of live tours, but he, I don't think Bernie ever appeared on a studio album, did he? No, like, I don't, I don't think so. Frank, it was the same thing with Frank Oresti early on. Frank appeared on a couple uh, studio albums, and then he was just playing live, and then he left, and he came back. But Bernie, Bernie's a great guitar player. Bernie, is, is Bernie okay? I mean, I know he was really sick for a while. Um, I, 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 he had uh, aneurysm. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, it was an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. hmm. He still can't play, but I guess he's getting by in life now so yeah it's a shame it's a shame but yeah it's a great uh, awesome live album i love ivory gates of dreams oh that's mm -hmm. such a killer song <laughs> so good so good good choice all right chuck all right my number five is um uh, we've been speaking about him for quite some time um john luke ponte live um you know it's just one of those albums that we speak about all the time you just wish that there was like another uh, two or three hours worth of music left um, to put on to this album. I would um, I would have killed for thirty minutes more. Oh, you're not kidding! What a what an outstanding album! You know, it made all of the the great songs from his prior great albums even better live. 
you know, it didn't need a, um, uh, well, we're not going to get into Holdsworth now, but, um, you know, which of this album was just, just great and just too bad. It's less than 40 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. And you know what? It probably would have made my list if it was, if it was longer. I, mm-hmm. it's, it's in my, like honorable mention, my second little batch of stuff. And I was like, mm-hmm. I love it to death, but I'm like, oh, it's like literally like what, 38 minutes? Oh, uh, like that. yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another one of those classic live albums that should have been a double. Mm-hmm. A lot of those. Wow. Yep. <laughs> All right, Anthony, I think you have another archival uh, release for us, right? I actually do. <laughs> this is my, this is my, this is the last one of the bunch. This is my number five. <laughs> Uh, it comes off my favorite. It, it's from my favorite album that they, they toured with. Uh, Permanent Waves, 1980, taken from a couple various stops. Uh, I could do without this cover, but it's still a great archival release. You know, Jacob's Ladder, Spirit of Radio, Free Will. I mean, just a phenomenal recording. Cygnus X1, Cygnus X2. If you're a Rush fan and you love Permanent Waves and you want to get a hold of a good good archival release from a tour this is the one to get yeah I gotta get that. I, i've been on the fence about getting that for a long time and you know what really scared me off that freaking cover yeah i didn't like the cover <laughs> they changed either. all their covers you know, I, 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 why I, I, though you know because I, what i would like what i would do this is how i operate is mm-hmm. i would go out and buy that reissue it's got the remastered album and the great live stuff and i would put it on my sh- after of course i enjoy it for months and months i would put it on my shelf and i take that old cd and i get rid of it but I will never do that because it's got to have the original cover. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah, oh, to me, I was like, I, "What are they doing here?" You know, I thought it was a comedy. I thought it was a comedy when I first saw. It. I was like, "Is this real?" <laughs> oh, so when, when they do the uh, signals, one are they going to put like a goat on it instead of a oh, dog? Or... No. <laughs> oh, you're the... saying I should get it anyway, right? I'll let you <laughs> <your> judgment. <laughs> it's that's it's good. I mean, I any any you know they, they hardly ever played Jacob's Ladder, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my all-time favorite tunes. And to hear the Cygnus stuff live is pretty cool. Uh, right, so just get there. My favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you've convinced me. I'm going to go do that. <laughs> I'm going to have a hefty Amazon bill after this show, I think. <laughs> Thanks to everybody here. Except I'm still not buying that Can album or that Mac. I'm not buying that. <laughs> Actually, you know, there is a, there is a Can album you might dig. Is uh, Future Days. It's very Floydy. Mm-hmm. It's like different from anything else they've, they've ever done because I thought Take Omega was terrible. <laughs> I bought a couple of them like 20 years ago. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> but people look at me like I've got three heads. Oh man. <laughs> I think oh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get ram for that comment. <laughs> <laughs> the Proggers will be on the hunt. Look at oh man. <laughs> Bursting out by Jethro Tull. I mean, uh, you know, I there's some really good Tull live stuff out there, like in the box sets, and they've released all sorts of live albums through the years. The Carnegie Hall stuff is great. Mm-hmm. The Isle of Wight stuff is great. But I was oh. like, ah, oh, you know what? But this is this is just amazing. Great double live album. This is great, all great, great, uh, mm-hmm. great lineup. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, the set list is great, and you know, a lot of people cite this as probably Tull's strongest lineup. Mm-hmm. and i wouldn't really argue with that uh anthony probably likes the one that came after it for a certain reason but that's okay well, no I, I i really believe you know barlow and, and glasscock were formidable as, as as a rhythm section that's um, yeah. I, I thought they were awesome yeah i'm just got lived too long he died too um too early mm-hmm. yeah oh big time big time so uh, but yeah i mean everything is on here so it's such great performances martin Barr sounds amazing on mm-hmm. here you got, uh, you know, David Palmer and John Evan and, you know, the rhythm section, which we just mentioned. And Ian sounds fantastic. A D Palmer. Right. Then, <laughs> yes. Now D, I know. I, I went through that today because I was, I reviewed the, uh, the Talus uh, uh, CD that Anthony bought for me and uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned now D, mm-hmm. then David, right? So it's got to, got to be correct on that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So. All right, George, back to you. All right, we got our first repeat. Got to have it, right? Mm-hmm. I fully admit this is largely nostalgia. I mean, after the Kiss live albums, this was the first live album that I probably just sat and listened to and listened to and listened to. Uh, but everything you said is true. The production's great. The set list couldn't be any better. And it caps that whole era. 
honestly, after it was all downhill from here. So, I mean, you can't ask for a better ending of sorts. So I say you got to upgrade your copy and get the one that I have. Yeah. <laughs> Although I was a little disappointed at this. The, that bonus disc, all I really, really wanted was the spider and Bellex's. Maybe uh, yeah. what's on your mind, on my mind, but hmm. it's all the good stuff yeah. on the first disc. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might have to ask someone if that stuff is available somewhere. Hmm. 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 <laughs> it's dangerous when people start going. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, my number four um, probably might be a little bit more um, streamlined as well. I don't know if everybody's going to be too crazy about this one, but it's um, Gong Live. Oh, uh, ETC, uh, etc. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, great album. Yeah. Uh, um, what's a, once again, another great band at their peak with um, one of their great lineups just playing some of the most amazing music ever, man. Um, what's it? Um, I know that um, the CD that I got didn't have the two, uh, the, the two, um, it's missing two tracks, tracks, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I have those on, if I'm not mistaken, on Angel's Eggs. So, those two songs that are missing from here are, are on the reissue of Angel Eggs, mm-hmm. Angel's Egg. Mm-hmm. And so, my number four is Gong, etc., live, etc. I believe that is the first album I ever owned that had Hillage on it. Yes. That was kind of that was my introduction to his guitar playing. I was like, oh, this guy is, you know. I had this on vinyl. You know, so that's you know, the on vinyl, this is even better because you know, this around here spins around and oh ah, those were the days. <laughs> know, know. Very cool. All right, Anthony. Uh my number four is not an archival release, it's a full release. Uh <laughs> Porcupine Tree, Live at Tilburg, oh, yeah. uh, 2008, mm-hmm. saw the tour, I said before, uh, just, you know, you, you get a DVD of the tour, you get two full discs of just power from the Fear album, and then you get, uh, you know, you get uh, oh, Normal, you get the, the four tracks that they left off and they made the AP, EP is on here, uh, a couple of the... Uh, uh, the tracks from the vault from in absentia like drown with me and they do sever and they do uh sleep of no dreaming from uh what's that album from 1996 um and um uh, 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 uh all right the, I, I with the girl on the front right what yeah the I, mm-hmm. I, but th- th- those two tracks signify, signify. 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 that's it mm-hmm. yeah Thank signify you. but sever and sleep of no dream just amazing so uh Porcupine Tree, Anesthetized from 2008, Live at Tilburg. Uh, two discs of just sheer power with Gavin on the kit and Steven on the guitar. Uh, the, the band was just hitting on all cylinders. And then they just kind of, everybody just walked away. Yeah. So Never- 2008, love it, number four. A lot of really great live albums recorded from there. I mean, it's just crazy when you think about it, both in Prague and with metal. That's just uh, crazy. But yeah, great choice. Great choice. All right. Uh, I have a feeling another one of our panelists might pick this, perhaps. Uh, between Nothingness and oh. Eternity from the mighty oh. uh, Vishnu mm. Orchestra, mm-hmm. made even better, and it should have been released as a longer album. George was kind enough to send me the rest of this recording mm-hmm. uh, which is only available what in that box set uh i mean this is absolutely ferocious you know as much as i love intermounting flame and um birds of fire birds of fire <laughs> then you hear this and you're like and they broke up after this oh it's like what no. <laughs> in the world is going on here uh, yeah. but yeah this is just um loud and frantic and beautiful in spots too, because mm-hmm. uh, these guys could get kind of tranquil when they wanted to. But more importantly, it was about the power and the precision. I mean, Cobham and McLaughlin are just oh, oh, fire, you know, fire here, <laughs> crushing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have you ever heard better Billy Cobham drumming on any album than on this? Oh, I'd mm-hmm. argue not. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was just amazing there. Oh. Oh. I mean, there's this, and I forget which track. I don't. Is it during the oh, dream? I don't remember? Is it during dream where the two of them are just like 
blade back and forth back and forth oh, mm-hmm. it's just it's like a machine gun fire right? oh. mm-hmm. could you imagine like be uh, what year was it 73 74 73 could you imagine sitting in central park in new york city middle of the <laughs> summer and you're like you know expecting some cool summertime music and these guys walk out on stage and unleash this on the audience of people are like what was that <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Like everybody's laying on the floor in a puddle. You know? Cover your ears. I wish I was there, man. It's like oh, same oh. here. Oh. I was only seven, so I know, right? Just too young. Like, hey, whatever. So. All right, George, back to you. Oh. This is the most obscure one on my list. <laughs> you said that about the other one. <laughs> Gary DeVillier Jr., Canadian uh, guitar player. It's a quartet, guitar, bass, drums, keys. I shouldn't even show this cover. This, it's a weird story. He put it out digital only, which unfortunately is getting to be more and more often now. And then a year later, after I already bought it and burned the disc out of it, he put it out uh, a kind of archival thing with this and uh, a studio disc. But I'm not going to buy it again. So this is what I got. There you go. Uh, recorded in 94, but it came out in 2013. It actually qualifies for the Martin Popoff and the Chris Sallow. It's not that jammy, mm-hmm. but there's no ballads. All these songs just get to the point, slap you. It's just really good stuff. Like, how, how long is that album, George? Uh, I'd say 50 something. I don't know offhand. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's only seven songs. So around 50 something. But yeah, it's to the point, just ass kicking confusion. Uh, and this guy, is really not active. He hasn't done anything since, except that mm. stuff. You know, no more albums of his own, unfortunately. Mm. Cool. That sounds All pretty right. exciting. So again, everybody, just to reiterate, we're going to list these in the comments. So uh, if you're having problems hearing us or seeing the, the CDs, mm. it'll be down in the comments. So look for it. But and I'm going to be looking too because I'm going to have to check that one out as well. Yeah, I'll put the, the information for the reissue in the comments. Okay. Is All that right. not available? Right. Cool. All right. Uh, my number three is um, Echolin's, uh Stars and Gardens. Ooh. Uh, um, what's that? I bought this the the day that it was released because I didn't get to go to that near fest or any other near fest. It's a long story. Oh, you didn't um, make any of them? Uh, no, I didn't make any of them. I, I actually had um, every money saved up for four of them, but I just things just happened that I couldn't even make it. You know, sadly. Um, what's the Echolin is one of my favorite bands, uh, probably one of my, my favorite progressive rock bands of this generation. And I bought it uh, mainly for, for my, you know, because I, I couldn't believe that they actually played my live. I remember Lewis was talking about that a couple of weeks ago. Um, <laughs> my is my favorite album from Echolin. And what's a, when you hear just the rest of the band playing hard and, and rocking on this album, I'm actually quite happy with this. Stars and Gardens, Echolin, is my number three. Fine choice. Mm-hmm. All right, Anthony. Uh, I guess I do have an archival release. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pink <laughs> Floyd, 1980, 81, live at Wembley, doing mm-hmm. the full of the wall. Uh, you, I, I adore this album. Uh, the live record is just, the live CDs are just phenomenal to hear it in its entirety, in order, is just it's, it's absolutely gorgeous stuff. And if you're a big fan of The Wall, you have to get this. It Pink Floyd, The Wall, live. Live, mm-hmm. live at Wembley. Just, mm-hmm. just amazing, amazing. Just to hear it live is just unbelievable. What a band. What's the, my late chihuahua, she chewed up um, a couple of sides of that, of that set. <laughs> Good. Now, I, just before now, now we know why thing. she's a little late chihuahua, right? <laughs> <laughs> just before the lockdown uh the pink floyd tribute band the machine i don't know if you've ever seen them pete they're from up, up around new york area yep. they did the wall in its entirety and it was pretty impressive yeah they're really good they're, they're very popular around here yeah so anybody is anybody but me like waiting for the day you have to imagine it's going to happen someday yeah. that someone in the floyd camp or a record label is going to take all the audio, the soundtrack to the Pompeii film and put it out as a damn live album. Oh, Are they gosh, ever going to do that? I, I wish. I, I, I really that. wish. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I, I, lo- I, I love that, that. I love that film. Oh, it's so good. And it, the music is so, they were so amazing there. It's like, just take all that audio, put it into a, onto a live album and release it. You know how much money they would make? Oh, I guess they don't care about it. They'd just be like, ah, we got it done. <laughs> I care. Like, release it. <laughs> all right. Uh, I this could be well, I don't know. It's in my top three. That's that shows how important it is. I love this band. I love this live album. This is one of those bands like you listen to the studio albums, you're like, wow. I doubt they can recreate that stuff live. This mm. band did it. Playing the fool, gentle giant. Oh. I mean, this is just mm. crazy good, so good, and uh, all their great songs are on here, and it's just absolutely impeccable. And just uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what more. The I can recording say sound is awesome, on right? There. It's one of the best sounding live albums from that time. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Well, I won't talk about it yet, but uh, <laughs> it's just I, I this is so much better than some other live albums from other prog bands who released live albums around that same time. This mm-hmm. I think sonically blows them all away. Yep. And it, it's, it's so amazing. It's the classic lineup and just you know proclamation on reflection octopus freehand just the same uh peel the paint i mean it's just so many great songs on here and just so powerful so good i i that's one of my like if i could hop in a time machine and go back in time and see a band that i love that i never had the chance to see i would love to see gentle giant right around this time i would be fine with that or a couple of years before i would i would kill to go back and see them oh, back especially in. that uh, that period all the great songs on there and that's another album that i wish had like maybe like another 40 minutes on it oh easily <laughs> easily yeah i mean it, it's you know it's good length on its own but yeah this yeah like give me two cds please just mm-hmm. you know two full two well it, it is two cds but i mean give me like uh, you know an extra 20 30 minutes and i'd be quite happy with that so all right, George, we're winding down. Number two. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I just I just bought this like on his recommendation like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so good. It's too new in my in my mm-hmm. collection to put it on my list, but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, two thousand two, but recorded in uh, over a period of a bunch of gigs in ninety six. Uh, I talked about it on the channel once before, just the best guitar playing, ferocious guitar playing that I, I've ever heard. Um, just all killer, no filler, six songs, especially the last song, Rice with the Angels. The solo in that is it's inhuman. That's a, pretty much all there is to it. But, I mean, George, what did I what did I do with this? when I got when I listened to it for the first time? I was playing it in the car. As soon as I got home, I got done listening to that song. I got I got back and I immediately sent an instant message to George. What did I say? That it was insane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely insane. I listened to it twice in the car. Did I just hear that correctly? What? So for yeah. anybody, for everybody watching, uh, mm-hmm. you can still get some of these. Uh, it's at Jonas Helborg. Sean Lane and uh, Jeff Sipe. All right, this is called Personae, but they have like four, George, three, four albums. Yeah, that they did mm-hmm. together. These three, or uh, well, yeah. Helborg and Lane did a bunch of them together. Yeah. They're various different drummers, but uh, they're still you can still get most of them. I would say mandatory. Go whichever ones you can get. Get. I mean, they're just great. Some of them are more improv type stuff some are more so this is a little more song based i think yeah but just mind-blowing stuff it's oh. fusion it's it's, it's rocking it's proggy it's just oh just absolutely incredible yeah. amazing great choice mm-hmm. well, uh, my number two uh, is an album that's going to make anthony quite happy <laughs> uh zappa live in new york mm-hmm. um well, one of the best live albums that he's that he's ever done and he's made a lot of great live albums but this lineup um all the great songs that are on here um the page you know the black page um the the illinois enema bandit <laughs> it's one of the songs that i <laughs> i laugh hysterically every time i read that but the song is it's such an amazing song uh punky whips uh, cruising for burgers, um, titties and beers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
this album, um, you know, it's uh, Michael Brecker coming out, you know, on a few songs, man. You know, the guy was, I, I always speak very well because I love Michael Brecker uh, just as much as I do Wayne Shorter. And on a few of these songs on this album, he just absolutely smokes on there. Um, Frank Zappa's live in, I mean, Zappa, Zappa in New York. Great album. Yeah, I would, um, that for me is one of the best kind of combinations of the fusion stuff that he was doing for a number of years and the, the humor stuff that was soon to come. And mm -hmm. man, that, that band is also uh, just top notch. I mean, he had like, what, three or four bands, I think, that stand head and shoulders above the other ones. And that's one of them. Yeah. Unbelievable album. Great album. Cool choice. We got a lot of Zappa represented. <laughs> All right, Anthony, number two. Done. My number two. My number two. Genesis seconds out. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of Zappa alumni, Chester Thompson just slays on this. Mm -hmm. uh, the dual drum uh, solo between he and Phil on Firth the Fifth is just yeah. amazing, uh, unbelievable. The only drawback to this is is you know they don't really feature Steve uh, guitar solos very much, and there's only one track from Wind and Wuthering. Most of it's uh, some of it's from Trick of the Tail, and some of it's from like uh, the Lamb, and then. Uh, they do the musical box, but it's a phenomenal live recording. It really is. Too bad this was Steve Hackett's swan song, but uh, Genesis Seconds Out, 1977. Again, that dual drum solo between Phil and Chester is absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, I know though, there are a lot of drummers that find that album to be one of the best recorded drum albums of all time. Mm -hmm. They love that album. I, I love Seconds Out. Yeah. Um, I, I prefer the majority of the songs on there um, better on Seconds Out than I do the studio versions, although the studio versions are still great. Like Supper's Ready, you know, and you can't go any wrong with Peter Gabriel, but that that's, um, Supper's Ready version is actually pretty damn good as well. And so was the Cinema Show version. The Cinema oh, Show version is really my good. My favorite too. song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, excellent. The Afterglow mm -hmm. is incredible. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, but I've got I've got two fantastic bootlegs from Trick of the Tail and from Dallas from Wind and Wuthering that are probably better than that. But yes. you know yeah. that could be for another show. Yeah, I mean they were <laughs> that band was just absolutely great live uh, at mm -hmm. that time, and that's the first Genesis album I ever bought. And you know it's funny. Same here. I, mm -hmm. I bought that. I saw that in uh, Record World in Middletown, New York. You know, back when I was a kid, and. I have always been, and it's probably Kiss Alive that did it to me, but I have always been a sucker for like live concert photographs on the front or back of an album. And whenever, even if I didn't know the band, I'd be like, look at that. That looks pretty cool. And I would buy it. <laughs> That's exactly, you know, they have to get the, the dry ice and the smoke and they just look so cool. The double neck guitar. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy that. And I took a chance. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. I got to, you know, know a lot of those songs with Phil singing before I heard Peter singing them. Same here. So, mm -hmm. it, and I, so, and I was perfectly fine with that. But yeah, the um, the live stuff from uh, Trick of the Tail is just killer on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. robbery, assault, and battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's great stuff. Great choice. Um, we might be speaking more about that in a minute. So, uh, I'm going to go with Yes songs. My number two. Oh, mm. You know, amazing. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what more can you say about this? This is just absolutely fantastic. And uh, the ba a band at the absolute height of their powers with, you know, arguably their classic lineup Well, some people with Bruford or with mm -hmm. White, right, whatever. But uh, I mean, all of their great tunes up to this point are on here. It's just absolutely fantastic. And yeah, everybody complains that the sound of the album isn't great. And same thing with the movie and all that. Blah, I don't blah, blah. care. I, I still think it's great. I don't care, mm -hmm. right? It's fine to be. You know what? It's going to see them live. They're going to sound like that, right? So mm -hmm. it's, I think uh, we've all been spoiled by so many of these pristine live albums that, you know, something that sounds like you were there is, is okay too, right? So, mm -hmm. but yeah. And this is Steve Howe. Yours is no disgrace. Oh my God. So good on here. So good on here. And it's, this is almost like the Steve Howe and Rick Wakeman coming out party this album. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so great. So, and I, and I've loved this album for, and I remember the first time I saw the Yes Songs movie on like USA Network. Like, remember that old night flight show? They used to show yeah. like concerts and stuff on a Friday or Saturday night. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I ever saw that. That was probably the late seventies. And I was like, wow, that's great. That's really good. I got to go out and buy yeah. some. I got to go out and buy some. Yes. And what did I do? The new album at the time was drama. So I bought that. I'm like, oh, this is different. That's not the same thing. I saw. That's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. All right. Number one, George, what do you got? 
Well, you know how you said that the Flectones were brave to put a half new live album? Yep. This band's album is entirely new, and it's the fourth out of five in a row that were all new live albums. We're talking about Snarky Puppy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We like it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's 100% brilliant. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody knows Lingus, not by now. It's a viral tune. Mm -hmm. Because of the just ridiculous keyboard solo from Corey Henry, but the entire album is at that level. I mean, there's no down parts to any of these songs. It's just utterly ridiculous how good this is. 2014 release. Um, the one after it's great too. It's uh, with an orchestra, almost as good as this. But this has just got that little something extra, and uh, comes with a DVD too. So can't beat it. Can't beat that. I mean, how cool is it that we have a band like Snarky Puppy in this day and age? Oh, oh man, what's a well needed win or get nominated for a Grammy like last year or something like that? Two years ago. Two years ago. No, they won this year. Oh, well, no, they did win this year. For, okay. Uh, their official live album that they just put out another live album. That one's <laughs> like a typical live album, the showing stuff from the studio albums. So why is it that a band like that, who is a throwback to a lot of the bands we're talking about today, get this kind of really positive uh, recognition, and yet there's so many other bands that just never get noticed? Oh, so, they got something about them. There's so it's kind of danceable. They got a lot more chicks. That yeah, show, yeah. You know, and it's the the funk. People, the chicks can get into the groove but, and. and but yeah. it's funny because they're they're a virtuoso type of band too. You know, hmm. what's a, you know their tech, their their music is quite serious at times too. But I'm surprised yeah. that, that you know there are a lot of young kids that like them. You well, know? you know what it is? There's the part of the jam crowd a crowd mm -hmm. has gotten into them, and that yeah. you know if you play, if you're a sort of a semi jam band, that's mm -hmm. a pretty popular genre style of music these days. So oh um, man, fish, why uh, why panic um <laughs> uh, widespread yeah. panic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of really good bands in that kind of toil in that area. So, so good yeah, that's a great album. I remember the first mm -hmm. time I heard that, I was like, oof, this is great. Great. They appeal to fusioners, they appeal to the jam crowd, they appeal mm -hmm. to the women. I mean, they appeal uh they got a online presence, they you know, so a, a lot of pro a lot of prog fans like them too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course, George said they appeal to women. That's the most important thing. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need to bring them here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well my number one um basically is piggybacking off of um sir peter over here weather report live in tokyo um we've already spoken about all the greatness of this album you know this is a band um at this time which is still very much um, versed within the jazz realm but you could see that they were hinting towards that funkiness there um you you really see the Moors, um, the medleys that they have there, Tears and Umbrella, um, Orange Lady again making that appearance. Um, a song that Joseph Zawinu had written for Miles Davis. Um, just another great, phenomenal album from their earlier period. That's my number one there. Live at Tokyo Weather Report. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Classic stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, Anthony. Drum roll, please. <laughs> All right, my number one is actually piggybacking off of Charles and Pete because it was played in Tokyo. There it is. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> UK Live, night after night. Uh, what can I say? Uh, and he had to be I'm, number one. <laughs> I had have to be. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Danger Money. It's one of my all-time favorite Love albums. It. Love it. Uh, this tour, uh, this record is phenomenal. Uh, they played uh, two new studio tracks for release that never released on a, a record because they were done after Danger Money, but they did night after night. And as long as you, as long as you live, as long as you want me here. So those are the two tracks. Uh, Danger Monty, Rendezvous 602, Caesar oh, Powell's Blues. It. What a phenomenal recording. What a fantastic trio. UK, Night After Night Live, 1979. Live at Tokyo. Good Excellent. stuff. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, it's my number Seconds one. Out. Mm -hmm. Seconds, Seconds out. Seconds out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Great production. It's a great sounding mm -hmm. album. Yes, mm -hmm. I, and I agree with everything Anthony said before about uh, Hackett seems like a little underutilized here, or as it's been rumored, he was mixed mm -hmm. a little lower. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> we don't know. But the rest of the, I mean, 
Banks's keyboard sound awesome on here. The drumming is great. The vocals are great. And it just, um, it sounds to me, it sounds like a band that's ready to make that next big jump. And they just sound really confident and uh, some fantastic, fantastic versions of some of these songs on here. Uh, I just, you know, for me, I wish that they played more of the lamb and the musical box and not just like a little medley, uh, but you get the whole supper's ready, which is great. Cinema show is just amazing. Dance on a volcano in Los Endos. I mean, oh, that, that drum solo in the middle. <laughs> oh, it's amazing on here. Squonk is great on here. Yeah. Oh, it right? opens it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Carpet crawl. I mean, robbery, assault and battery, the whole thing afterglow for it. The fifth, as Anthony mentioned, is just great. It's, it, it's a wonderful album. And it's funny as much as I love the, earlier genesis live album mm -hmm. and i wanted that to be longer i think this yeah. is almost mm -hmm. everything you want right so mm -hmm. uh, yeah great stuff great stuff that's my number one anybody want to talk about the ones that didn't quite make the cut oh uh, well uh i was going to use um the weather report uh, album uh the one that they um the archival one i was going to put that as one of the albums on the side i was like nah, i'll leave that for another time but um, the Weather Report album, the what is it, the 78 through 81 that I um, previewed earlier in the week, uh, that's one album uh, that I was going to put out there, Weather Report. I was going to say Brecker Brothers' Heavy Metal Bebop was a yes. just this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mahavishnu that you said. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> the Haken Live. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Just this. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anthony, you got any uh, honorable? Uh, yeah, I was going to... Uh... <clears throat> I was going to pick a camel, but I wasn't going to pick the one that everybody adores. Uh, I love Pressure Points because I think Stationary Traveler is a phenomenal album. And that's mm -hmm. pretty much the tour. Most of the songs are on. It's like a, you can get a two disc of it and it's just phenomenal. And then Pete Bardens makes a guest on one of the uh, camel tunes that they play from uh, Snow Goose towards the end. He makes, he get, makes a guest appearance. It's, I think it's from the uh, Hammersmith Odeon is, is where the show's from. But uh, one of the guys who played in... Um, Alan, I think it was Alan Parsons. I can't remember. Chris something is one of the lead singers, and he does a fantastic job on those stationary traveler tunes. I mean, Andy Latimer live, uh, like the opening track, Pressure Points, is mm -hmm. why I love Andy Latimer so much because it's an opening track instrumental, and that tone, it's just. If you're a huge David Gilmore fan, you have to listen to Andy live because it's just it scratches that itch. I mean, it is mm -hmm. just gorgeous stuff. Yeah, very he's melodic. got an emotional style, which is very similar to Gilmore at times. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good choices. Uh, for me, the ones that didn't quite make the cut today, uh, Frank and Bali Live. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that I first know. came out, George. Man, well, that's like. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just watching video on him. Also, um, after we got off um, our chat, uh, I was actually watching videos of him, like basically like the rest of the afternoon. Oh, I love that guy. Oh, he's so cool. And he's such a like fun, lovable dude, right? He looks like it too, man. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one, uh, Miles Davis uh, Agarta. Oh, I was going to pick that one too. Mm -hmm. That's pretty Especially that one. Mm -hmm. Dense and dark and out there. And, <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's got the two guitar players just mm -hmm. stepping on the wah-wah pedal and going berserk and oh, Miles man. hanging off somewhere in the <laughs> bathroom somewhere. You kind of hear him down the hall, whatever it's <laughs> so good um, I, not the ponty live the brecker brothers album that you mentioned mm -hmm. uh the sean lane uh live album uh what is it um power powers, of 10. powers of 10 live that's mm -hmm. amazing um uh, dixie dregs uh there they have a couple of drugs mm -hmm. bebop deluxe live in the air mm -hmm. age mm -hmm. and uh, i just put down dream theater because dream theater has uh, like a million great live albums i couldn't decide which one i was like yeah they're all so good right yes mm -hmm. so, uh, Thieving Magpie by Marillion, um, mm -hmm. Utopia, another live. You know, there's so many of them. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we could have done a five hour show here today. Well, we could go on forever with that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good stuff. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, some of our favorite live albums that fall into the prog rock, prog metal, and jazz fusion spectrums here. So everybody watching, uh, list them below. Uh, they'll be your favorites. We'll be happy to take a look at those and see what everybody comes up with. I want to thank uh, these fine fellows here for putting some work in here and coming up with some really, uh, this, we barely overlapped on anything. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, there was a couple of albums here that you weren't too crazy about, but. <laughs> that's right. I mean, it doesn't matter what I think. You love them and that's all that matters. That's, that's the name of the game. I, you know what? I don't, 
I can't like everything, and uh, but there are a lot of you know that's that's the way it is, right? We all we all have different things here, so it's exactly uh, mm-hmm. what, it, what is something that I can't listen to can be someone else's favorite, and that's the way it should be. So Pete, the, the Chris I was thinking of is Chris Rainbow. That's his, uh, that's what I was gonna say, Chris Rainbow. Mm-hmm. Sung very well on that album. Yeah, just one it was like a one shot deal, but man, mm-hmm. oh man, good pipes. Absolutely cool. So. Uh, there you have it, everybody. So stay tuned. Uh, we're actually going to have another a special edition of In the Prog Seat this Thursday with uh, Ken Golden, Steve Feigenbaum from Laser's Edge and Cuneiform. We're going to kind of I'm going to talk to the both of them uh, about kind of the state of uh, you know having a label in in the industry mm-hmm. today. Like, what's it like to have a retail outlet and uh, you know an online store mm-hmm. and producing your own albums and releasing your own albums and kind of how that works in this day and age when you're trying to sell and produce and distribute you know progressive rock and fusion and jazz and all that kind of stuff so they're going to talk a little bit about that so stay tuned for that on thursday but uh we will have a very cool show for you a week from tonight so uh it has been a long time in the making so we're gonna have uh two of the well three of us here and then anthony's going to sit this one out and he's going to be watching from the sidelines mm-hmm. <laughs> learning a little bit i think on mm-hmm. some alan holdsworth right so uh anthony was uh kind enough to say you know what i'll sit this one out we'll have sean tonar come in and basically we're going to give our five favorite for each of us our five favorite alan holdsworth solo albums mm-hmm. and then our five favorite Alan Holdsworth appearances on other people and bands uh, albums. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, that's been in the works for quite a while and that's happening a week from tonight. So stay tuned for that. And then uh, Anthony will join the fun the following week. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Damn time. <laughs> and today I'm gonna pick for final words, Chuck, final statement of the day. All right, final statement, man, is everyone just stay healthy. That's all I'm asking for, man. You know, I don't need to lose any more people in my life, man. Uh, it's beautiful. And today in New York was such a beautiful day. You know, after I got my vaccine shot, I was able to just walk around um, towards the train station and look at the beautiful sights out there. And I'm just happy to be over here, guys. And thanks again, Brother Pete. I appreciate it, man. Good day, guys. Thanks, everybody, for George and Chuck and Anthony. As we take off into the sunset. (laughs) (laughs) It worked out any more perfectly. (laughs) Holy moly. (laughs) Last off into (laughs) speed. Thanks for watching, everybody. uh, For everybody here and everybody watching, have a good night, and we'll see you. Good night. Good night, everybody.